For your convenience, I have put together a complete shopping list of the art supplies you will need at Amazon. If you are anti-Amazon, I have also compiled that supply list at the Blick Art website. Those links are available in our Brightspace course. You of course may purchase from anywhere and maybe you already have some of these supplies. Let's start with paper. To begin with, we need a sketch pad or journal. This is not for your finished work. This is for you to sketch out ideas before jumping into your art assignments. Think of it as your personal journal. No one is judging your drawing ability. Draw, take notes, collage, whatever you desire. In fact, this is a good moment for me to assure you that I'm not judging your artistic skill level in this course. I grade you on following the assignment instructions, putting in the time, and presenting a clean, well-crafted result. Also, I will include tutorials on how to use all of these supplies so that you can minimize frustration and maximize creative play. Back to your sketch pad. I recommend at least 30 sheets that are at least eight by eight inches and a thickness of at least 50 pounds. I know, the pound is a weird measurement. The higher the pound number, the thicker the paper. That 50 pound label is a historical reference that refers to a ream, which is 500 sheets of paper. The idea is that 500 sheets of this kind of sketch paper would weigh 50 pounds before it is cut down to size. For comparison reference, copy paper is typically in the 20 pound range. One more note about your sketch pad. You may prefer a dot grid sketch pad. I like both. Dot grid paper is great for creatives who prefer some structure for alignment without the distraction of ruled lines or graph paper. Let's move on to the mixed media pad. Mixed media is a catch-all term that refers to artworks that combine different art materials and techniques within a single piece. The mixed media pad is a medium thick paper that is ideal for wet materials like paints. It's constructed in a way that resists warping and buckling. I recommend the size of nine by 12 inches with at least 50 sheets at a minimum of a 90 pound thickness. We also want a Bristol pad. This specialty art paper is even thicker, labeled at 100 pounds. It's tough, smooth, and professional looking, ideal for markers, pen, and ink. Also, your finished pieces on mixed media paper will be glued to this kind of paper. Does it have to be Bristol? No, but it does have to be at least 100 pound paper. Just know that ink and marker look better on Bristol's smooth surface. If you try to paint on Bristol, you will discover that it warps significantly. That's why we need the mixed media paper. Mixed media paper may slightly bend at the edges, but it looks great once you let it dry and glue it to the Bristol. We also want a wide assortment of colors for our collage work. I recommend this color assortment of Astro Bright's paper. It provides a wide variety of colors at a very reasonable price. I think it comes with six sheets of black paper, but if not, you may want to get more black paper because we tend to use it a lot. Another option, and totally optional, is to use canvas boards for some of your assignments. Canvas is sturdier for layering paints and mixed media. You can often find packs of 10 8x10 canvas boards for around $10 to $12. On to cutting tools. I recommend a 12x18 inch self-healing cutting mat, a 15 or 18 inch stainless steel ruler, a number one exacto knife, and at least five number 11 blades for that knife. Cutting precise lines with an exacto knife and ruler is a must have skill in the art world. Although skilled artists can cut precise curvy shapes, I do not expect that of you in this course. I would love for you to practice that, but feel free to have scissors handy as your backup. Pencils, we need art pencils. At the minimum, get three, uh, the 4B, HB, and F. These labels are part of a pencil grading scale that help artists understand the texture and effect the pencil will create. The 4B pencil is great for soft, dark shading. We want an HB pencil, which is great for general sketching due to its blend of hardness and darkness. In case you're wondering, the HB is essentially the standard number two pencil. F is for fine point. Made for fine detailed work, these pencils stay sharper longer. One last thing about pencils. No pencils are actually made from lead, not since the 16th century. They are made of graphite, a non-toxic material. The term pencil lead simply persists out of tradition. Get a high quality eraser like this Mars plastic one. It erases cleanly without damaging your paper. We also want Micron pens. Micron pens are the industry standard for artists. I recommend an assortment of three sizes, all black. Micron is a brand name, so there are other brands out there. However, it's not easy to find others with this kind of archival quality ink. 
This special ink is waterproof and resists fading. It's also less likely to smudge and doesn't bleed through most types of paper. You'll want a flexible plastic circle template. Be sure to get one with this large variety of circle sizes. Paint. You will need acrylic paints, some artist brushes, and paint markers. For your acrylic paints, I recommend a six-piece set that contains your three primary colors for mixing. A black, a white, and a mysterious green you may be wondering about since it's not a primary color. Color theory tells us that blue and yellow mixed together produce green. However, popular greens can be difficult to mix, so kits often come with this helpful green hue. You will want a variety of paint brushes, ideally two to three round brushes ranging from small to medium. You'll also want a liner brush which has thin long bristles, sometimes referred to as a rigger brush. Shader brushes are important too. You will want at least two sizes, a small and a medium. You want at least one flat brush that is around three fourths of an inch. You may want a larger brush too. These are designed for applying paint evenly over a large area. We are going to use rubber cement and glue sticks for our glue needs. Rubber cement is great for professional looking results and depending on how you apply this glue, you can achieve temporary removable bonding so that you can make adjustments before final placement, which is great for collage work. Also, it's non-wrinkling, thereby keeping your collage work smooth. Since it remains slightly flexible when dry, it resists tearing and it won't warp your paper. Another great advantage is that its glue residue is easy to remove with this rubber eraser. Glue sticks are best for smaller areas and fast application. If you do a lot of layered collage work, you may want this matte medium, but it's totally optional. It has a dual purpose, which is cool. It's a glue for collaging, and it can be added to your acrylic paints for smoother, more transparent textures. Let me restate that it is totally okay if you are new to these art supplies. It's totally okay if you are new to art. I will do my best to offer helpful video tutorials along the way. Now let's get started.